Hey, welcome to Caching in the Northwest. You know, this is the podcast from the birthplace of geocaching right here in the great Pacific Northwest. Now, it's Thursday at 9 p.m. Pacific, and they call me Chris of the Northwest. And we're going to talk about geocaches and geocachers from here and all around the globe. So while you're filling the kids' Easter baskets, we'll be caching in the Northwest. Oh, yeah, 10 days to Easter. We, we bought some stuff for baskets already. Oh. Tonight, though, we're talking about out door safety got to be safe when you're outdoors there's been some unfortunately uh unsafe incidents or some news incidents of mishaps and mayhem in the news so it's a good reminder to stay safe out there live audience share your thoughts with us and how does you stay safe outdoors and any advice you have for others but first while well, it's nice to be back to welcoming in our Safety Simeon. Some say he's tougher than a woodpecker's lips. Another say he sweats more than Iron Man going through an airport and metal detector. All we know is he's called Land Monkey. Welcome back. Hey, thanks. I've got lots of recent experience of going through airport metal detectors. So I, can, I can relate to that comment. Did you sweat going through them? Um, No, but I sweated a lot overall. So. It was a uh, it was a sweaty trip. Well, parts of it were a sweaty trip. Parts of it were a cold trip. Anyhow, regardless, it was it a cold is, sweat. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> a quick reminder that we appreciate the support of our patrons who help to keep this podcast coming each and every week. Thanks to Land Sharks, one of our corporate Denali sponsors. You can find them at l a n d s h a r k z dot c a um hey give me a break it's been a month um uh just because i was hanging out with them for a month doesn't mean i remembered how to spell it um and of course um uh, so check them out there online uh for all your geocaching and geocaching related needs uh as well as our other corporate denali level sponsor oh that's what i forgot to do i forgot to push my little buttons here as well as our other corporate denali level sponsor well, that would be Gold Country Geotourism. Visit exploregoldcountry.com. Ah, learn more about the geotours, more about the region. Don't forget to download the app. And uh, you can find them on Explore Gold Country on Facebook, Instagram, or on, on their website there. And folks, if you want to know more about supporting this here podcast, remember to click the Patreon link right over there, right over there on the cachingnw.com. Oh, I'm not sure where it is in the window, up, down, left, right. But hey, head over there and click that. And remember, you can sign up for Patreon. Uh, sign up on Patreon for free. You don't have to sign up for a, a vote. We do appreciate all of the monetary support. You can sign up for free and get notifications of the latest news and posts and all that kind of stuff. Just another way to keep your fingers on the pulse of CNW. That's right. Cool. Hey, you know, I really appreciate our live listeners. Now, I appreciate all our listeners, right? But but those tuning in, I've we've after all these years of doing podcasts, we have them trained because Wet Coaster already asked, "What is a glow?" <laughs> now we're not even doing a glow tonight. I just want to mention that, but we've got them trained. So no glow, no wow. glow tonight. I, I think we have enough in the topic. Um, Heather's actually looking forward to this topic. My husband, her husband, let's make that clear, uh, teaches first aid CPR on the side. I was always taught CPR on the back, but maybe on the side works too. I was taught in the front. Oh, yeah. Right Laying the them on their back. Anyway. This may not be the right podcast for getting... <laughs> accurate <laughs> information <laughs> oh yeah and land monkey thanks for coming back we appreciate you and folks we make it look easy but that's because we're here each and every week and you get used to it right yeah. and you can fall out of practice so clearly there's times where you know even when we're here each and every week we make mistakes so hey we're human as well. Just wanted to let you 
no, that this isn't AI producing this. This is real people. We're, we're keeping it real and relatable. There That's you go. right. My my intelligence is not artificial in any way. It, it would be generous to call mine intelligence. So. Oh, there you go. It's more artificial than intelligence. Yeah. Hey, folks, tonight we are talking about safety. So use the hashtag safety in the chat if you want to add to tonight's show our chat lackey is sitting on the edge of his seat just waiting for that hashtag safety to come through so if you yell at him will he fall out of his seat probably yeah. wait wait I, th- I think he's taking a nap right now <laughs> let's yell at him I, so, chat I, lackey use the hashtag safety in all caps oh yeah. there you go <laughs> I, i'm being punished for having been away for so long so i i don't have my normal view on the screen so i can't see the chat lackey which is actually kind of great so I can do whatever I want, and it's not like I'm ignoring him. I just can't see him. So <laughs> I've got a free pass for it tonight is the way I'm looking at it. Love it. Also, you can use the hashtag FATAS to bring up anything in the after show. That's something you want to talk about. Maybe you're excited about an event. You've got a new GeoCoin. Uh, I don't know. You bought a new drill this week, right? You can talk about that in the chat. And, you know, it doesn't have to have anything to do with the show. I, I'd like to talk about penguins. but Oh, did you buy a new penguin this week? I, I, I have new penguins. Pin wings? I have two new penguins. But I guess we'll have to wait till next week to talk about my new penguins. I well, was, I, th- uh... I thought I'd give you a week to kind of recover, you know, get off of the jet lag or boat lag or whatever they call it. Lag lag. Lag lag. Yeah. Um, I was just shocked by the number of outdoor safety um, articles that came out just this week. Things have happened this week. Uh, I think it's because it's the start of spring. Weather's getting a little better. Is, and, and, and things warmed up. Yeah. Like, pretty. I was, I'll, I'll be honest, like, well, no, because most of the time I lie on the podcast. Um what, what I thought was particularly interesting was um, while we were away, I did get some you know weather updates and such. And I knew that it had snowed uh, mm-hmm. up here in uh, Southwest BC while I was away. And then, um, you know, we fly back and I've got my, my BC layers on as I, as I exit the plane and, and we step out of the airport. I'm like, Oh, Oh, it's warm. <laughs> <laughs> So, we hit uh, nearly 70 Celsius or 70 Fahrenheit, excuse me, down here. So I guess the sudden and but this is where it's dangerous. And I and I know we'll get we'll get into this stuff, but but this is where it's dangerous, right? Because we haven't had a very long cold winter. Uh we've had this up and down and up and down and up and down. So any snowpack that might be there is very unstable. Um, and that's another thing to be thinking about as we're going out in the northwest. But um I digress. Do you? As I am wont to do. Mm. Um, first, a quick story from Kalispell. In their yeah. law... Huh? We're, we're jumping right into the news, by the way. I'm just... You know, here we go. Uh, but I wanted to impress you with the fact that I knew where Kalispell oh. was. Oh, Kalispell. Kalispell, Montana. Great little town. Right there in the uh, Flathead Lake. Flathead Valley. You're a yes, but that's just because, you know, I laid my crib too long. Uh, Girl, my lord, in a flatbed Ford. No, that's oh, flathead. Yeah. yeah. A flathead Ford? Yeah. <laughs> it was milled to a flathead. <clears throat> you know what? We need to get to the news. Um, this <laughs> came from uh, just today in Kalispell. After their son described seeing someone drop off an item in the parking lot of a big box retailer, a parent phoned the Kalispell Police Department to report a possible drug deal. A vehicle reportedly had driven up to a pole on the west end of the parking lot. Someone inside grabbed an object and then dropped off another before departing. Officers recognize the location as a geocaching site. I love when police do that. Well, really, any location can be a oh, that's true. site. <laughs> so, oh, I shouldn't stealth and camouflage. The new uh, motto for, for geocaching as a game. 
um, geocaching, making it harder and harder for drug dealers. <laughs> <laughs> Using up all the good spots. <laughs> Yeah, oh, submit what? that to HQ and see how yeah. it goes. <laughs> I can't Take imagine any problem with that. For drug drops. Well, what we call a simple park and grab, other people call a possible drug drop. So, uh, you know, use a little discretion maybe. Yeah, the average muggle says, what? Those skirts lift? Yeah. <laughs> Well, okay, but and you say use a little discretion, and I understand what, what you're saying. You know, certainly yeah. try, but I mean, come on, a, a big box retail store parking lot lamp skirt lift. There is no such thing as discretion. You're maybe you're right. Maybe Great. you're right. <laughs> In the middle of the parking <laughs> lot. Yeah, if you can lift it quietly, you're you're skilled. I'm impressed. Yeah. Yeah. Take your can of WD forty. Put the post. Hose the whole thing down. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Let's All right. Well, another news story is from right there in Tacoma from the News Tribune website. It says hikers get stuck on a 24 mile trek, but a friend was able to help them. There were two hikers. They were on a 24 mile trek through rugged peaks and alpine lakes in Washington, oddly enough, when they realized they were stuck. And you know, it's always good to realize when you are stuck rather than just ignoring it and trudging on. There was a 31-year-old from Utah and a 35-year-old from California. They were, they were out to hike the enchantments. They set out on Friday, March 15th. And, you know, there's not a good sign to start on the Ides of March, right? So yeah, That's a good point. That, you know, to beware that. Already some strikes against them there. And uh, they had planned to be done with their journey on Sunday, March 17th. Ah, but the luck of the Irish was not with them on that St. Patty's Day. When that day came, they were only halfway through the hike. So they used a satellite device. We've talked about satellite devices here mm -hmm. on the podcast. They messaged a friend about 9 p.m. that they were stuck and had to stay another night in the wilderness, even though they weren't prepared to do so. Ah, be prepared. Along with that message, they sent their GPS coordinates and the friend gave them to the authorities, said they needed help. They hunkered down for another night on the trail and they were spotted the next day about 4.45 p.m. So, you know, almost a full day there uh, by helicopter they spotted and they were flown out to uh, the parking lot, which is about 10 miles away to Kolchuk Lake. They were near Kolchuk Lake. So they may not have been completely prepared to spend an extra night up there, but Sounds like they had a satellite beacon of some sort and, uh, you know, did some planning ahead at least. So. They were stuck. You know, I don't think they were stuck. I, I think they just didn't achieve their uh, hiking targets. They were out and, of supplies or something, maybe. 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 Um, and and were forced to stay an extra night. Uh, my guess is they would have stayed an extra night or two had the authorities not, uh, the rescuers had not spotted them and got them out of there. Right. right. That makes sense. Okay, yeah. It, it, it felt like there's a, 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 an information gap in the story that we received here. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I just had to put some things together there. Yeah, um, no, I, I'm not blaming the, uh, not blaming the, the, the podcasters here <laughs> I'm blaming the news source um i you know i look at them they're from utah and california so maybe they don't know washington state well right went out in march march isn't a great time to go hiking in the mountains around here yeah well and and maybe we should explain what the enchantments are and why it's not a great place to be hiking in in march shall i Please, please cool. elaborate. Yes. Um, so they're uh, re referred to locally as a mountain wonderland for hikers. Um, it's within the Alpine Lakes wilderness of the Cascade Range, which might not mean much to most people. But if you are familiar with Washington State, it is near the town of Leavenworth. So if you've been to Leavenworth, you know, pretty remote, pretty tucked mm -hmm. right up into the mountains. Um, so you can kind of picture 
the the area these these folks were hiking um uh lots of beautiful lakes creeks peaks mountain goats um uh the the officials uh are, are quoted as saying see beautiful alpine larch trees standing tall against green meadows and light gray granitic rocks picture perfect scenes that'll make you pause to take in the serenity i guess these hikers paused and took a little too much serenity in That's right. and therefore can you uh, get too much serenity well now yeah <laughs> Anyhow, typically it's an 18 mile hike, um, according to some research on all trails, uh, highly challenging, meant for overnight backpacking. Um, um, but this time of year, uh, just because some routes get snowed in or are just not passable, it actually becomes a 24 mile hike. So I'm wondering maybe if that's part of what happened to these folks mm -hmm. as well, is they're sort of just following the all trails uh, default answer without doing mm. full research. Yeah, without yeah. doing your seasonal research and realizing it adds another six miles. Yeah, I mean, six miles is a long ways. Mm -hmm. They say it's all, although it's warming up at the lower elevation, it's still very much winter throughout the most of the hike. It's important to know your limitations and prepare for unexpected delays. There you have it, right? Yeah, so that just happened. Another one, that just recently happened is uh, two men fall, fell into a freezing waterfall and go missing bodies oh. of two men were found a day after they fell into the freezing Washington waterfall. The men were with a group uh, at Eagle falls at about four fifteen PM Saturday, March 16th. Uh, again, lucky the Irish wasn't with them. At one point, the group was on top of the falls. The sheriff, sheriff's, department spokesperson courtney o'keefe said two of the college age men fell into the water and never resurfaced rescuers looked for the missing men for hours but couldn't find them their bodies were recovered in the area of eagle falls before noon the next day and taken to the medical examiner's office oh, that's terrible yeah just terrible so i you know there there were actually three or four stories just this week of uh, tragedy in in the outdoors and i thought you know what we need to talk about this yeah it it doesn't say what they were doing when they fell in so who knows i mean it could have just purely been an accident one guy fell grabbed another guy they both went in mm -hmm. could have you know standing posing on the rocks for that instagram photo and slipped uh, who knows right so. well and the water's freezing you're up on yeah. top you know it's colder up there yeah they could have been standing on ice I am uh, contributes. They were Japanese ex college exchange students. Oh, there you go. So even sadder. Well, you might wonder then if it's even safe to swim up there. It, by the way, Eagle Falls, it's at the south fork of the Skykomish River up along U.S. Route 2, which is the highway that leads through Leavenworth. So up in the same kind of area. Mm -hmm. It's about a 55 mile drive northeast of Seattle. There are reports of people swimming in the area, but deputies up there warn against it. The water up there has an extremely strong current underneath, and it can pull down even the strongest swimmers. Uh, the water is fast, deep, and right now, with all the snow melt, because the weather's warming up, the water's running really high. So it's very dangerous, very slippery. The current's very swift, and the water is very, very cold. So you get hypothermia very quickly. Yeah. Authorities said they respond to rescue calls every year in that area, and they encourage people to just find other swimming spots and always wear a life jacket. Yeah. Iham seems to have more information. He says one fell in and his buddy jumped in and tried to save him. Both didn't make it. I wondered if that was the case. Mm -hmm. That's sorry. Chris, you're bumming me out tonight. Well, I know. Now, I, I actually asked for uh, some feedback on this. I go, this is not the topics we normally cover, right? Yeah. Uh, is this too dark? Is this too sad? But now let's talk about some of the skills you need to survive in the outdoors. Uh, have you guys seen the TV show Alone? Never heard of it. I'm familiar with it. I okay. don't know if I've ever watched it. Um, basically, they put, I don't know how many contestants, out into the wilderness. They're, they're outdoor survivalists, right? Um, and they have to... They go out there with minimal tools. They have to make their own shelter, catch their own food, the whole bit. 
Uh, a lone contestant and wilderness preparedness expert, Mark D'Ambrosio, isn't that a great name? Mm -hmm. uh, talks through the basic skills of survival, or as he puts it, wilderness sustainment techniques. In short, how to stay warm, fueled, and safe. D'Ambrosio is the founder of International Mountain Survival, where he leads varying levels of courses designed to prepare people for a life spent enjoying the outdoors. In the last 100 years, what never used to be considered a sur survival skill now is, because we just don't learn this secondhand anymore, says D'Ambrosio, who competed in season seven of the hit History Channel show alone in 2020. And I add, didn't we all kind of do alone in 2020? As, as I was about to say, in 2020, the show was called Very Alone. <laughs> or, or me alone. That's right. <laughs> um, uh, I am. I should have. I should have had him on the show. He's got all the inside scoop. He says there was also a snow cat rescue up near government camp at Mount Hood earlier this week. Hmm. Okay, now I'm curious. Is it using a snow cat to perform a rescue, or was there a snow cat that got into trouble and needed to be, and the mm -hmm. operator needed to be rescued? Did did a snow cat rescue a snow cat? It can happen. Yeah. Okay. Let's get back to D'Ambrosio. Okay. Uh, let's see. Because he's alone, so we should get back to him. Well, not at this point, but he was at one point. It doesn't come naturally to us anymore to do things like preserving food or staying warm. How to light a fire and stoke a fire? Well, now, learning how to start a fire could be a life-saving skill. When it comes to survival, D'Ambrosio thinks in very specific terms. When people think of survival, they think of alone, extended living outdoors with just a few items. That's not survival. That's just outdoor living. It becomes survival if you get hypothermia out there. Extended survival is more about mindset and having a lot of luck. What I teach people is basic outdoor tips that anyone can practice to keep themselves safe while exploring to avoid survival. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So D'Ambrosio calls these wilderness sustainment techniques. They're practical, effective, and can be implemented into your outdoor routine. Here's seven of them. All right. Well. Uh, the first of the seven that we have from D'Ambrosio is um, to communicate and become familiar with your safety devices. Um, communicate and become familiar. Okay, so understand how to communicate using safety devices. Mm -hmm. you know Not like talking well, to your safety devices like, oh, Compass, I miss you so much. <laughs> No, I okay. Oh, I, I, true north for me. I'm well. Do you know how to truly use a compass? Well, yes. I, I think we're going to get there in the in the next section. But yeah, right. valid point. I'm I'm being a little. Yes, it points true north, but does that? I mean, how do you know where you are and where you need to go based on a compass reading? Right. Well, I'm right so, in front of the compass. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Probably Maybe I'm no. the one that doesn't know. Never mind. <laughs> All right. So anyhow, getting back to being familiar with your safety devices, um, whether you're on a day hike or a multi-day hike, um, you, you need to be keeping up and keeping in connection with somebody. Uh, don't go more than 24 hours without somebody knowing that you're okay. You could be out there missing for multiple days before search and rescue even knows to start looking for you. We've had that conversation mm -hmm. with Sandra on the show before for sure i i think we've covered all of these at one time or another mm -hmm. um yeah. it was just interesting to see it in a little different light covering yeah. the same things so yeah I'm absolutely and i'm not criticizing the, that um i just I, I think it's interesting that they they're they're such uh, so recurrent mm -hmm. uh, truths often are well i i really liked his phrase uh, um a hundred years ago, you didn't have to teach these things, mm. right? People knew how to do this. And today we are so urbanized that we may not know how to start a fire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And, but I mean, the first one we're talking about is, is less about very basic things like starting a fire and, and keeping warm. Mm -hmm. It's more about the, 
safety communication devices and things. And so, yeah, he goes on to say that uh, on the deep backcountry trips, uh, he's using the Garmin inReach. As you said earlier on the show, Chris, there's a mm -hmm. variety of different um, uh, tools and technologies that perform the same kind of satellite-based communication for emergency. Uh, and, and sometimes, and I think this is the point, not even just for emergency communication, right? Because um, a, a lot of these devices now have the ability to have, a, a, you know, uh, once an hour, they mm -hmm. just send a message to a preset uh, phone mm -hmm. number. Um, they'll, they'll send a text to a phone number that you tell it to. Um, so with a set of coordinates. So, um, and some sort of status update, right? So it's like every, mm -hmm. you know, if someone's at home, every hour they get a text. Oh, yeah, Jay's now at these coordinates. Oh, it looks like he's moving. Great. And, you know, if something happens, the, the, the search and rescue crew has effectively a trail of breadcrumbs that can follow. Yeah. It's a lot well, more than what they've had in the past. And, and this is what he's talking about, right? That just doesn't happen out of the box. No. You have to be familiar with how to have that set up. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly, yeah. No, and so... And so just don't think you're going to stop by a big box store, grab uh, Garmin inReach and start on your hike, right? You've got to take the time to understand how to use it. Yeah. Um, interesting. It talks about, uh, so it's going to go on here to something that isn't applicable in Canada, mm -hmm. but probably in the U S because he talks about here, he says, um, with, with the inReach device, it's also beneficial to get helicopter insurance. A uh, hundred dollars a year, it covers your whole family. Um, the author has a, a buddy, a survivalist instructor, who had to have his kid airlifted, and it was a twenty thousand dollar ride because he didn't have helicopter insurance. So, I, I I'm gonna let you speak to the U.S. situation, but in Canada, we do not have to pay for an extraction like that if we were in in some sort of dire situation and, and i think this is one of the things that um sandra and our search and rescue friends who've been on the podcast from bc before really try and make clear is like call if you're in trouble mm -hmm. call mm -hmm. don't because i think people come here where i live up in canada and and get into trouble and they're like oh yeah. well i don't want to pay twenty thousand dollars so i'll figure this out myself yeah. Right. The worst thing you can do. Yeah. Because I ain't worth 20,000 bucks. If I'm out there, just leave me, please. <laughs> That's not true. It is, actually. You're worth at least 20,000, Jim. Yeah. But yeah, that's good. Get that thing set up. The breadcrumb trail is great. So they'll either mm -hmm. find you or whoever stole your backpack and mugged you on the trail. That could be true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And hopefully they'll know where they mugged you. Well, and they'll be able to follow the breadcrumb trail back to your body. Oh, there you go. Okay. So, yeah. And I thought the news stories were dark. And they'll be able to navigate, which you really should know how to do. We mentioned the compass, but, you know, basic thing to have is a map. Mm -hmm. You can get printed maps at almost any ranger station, trailhead, those kind of things are out there. Nowadays, of course... A lot of things are digital, so download one. You may not have data out there on your phone to download a map on the fly. You know, we've got a phone. Oh, that's great. I'll just head out there in the middle of nowhere and turn the phone on. Oh, wait, no signal. Um, the author, I think D'Ambrosio, says he loves to use Onyx maps because they cover the entire United States for about $100 a year when you purchase all the maps. And you can download a map while you're in service, hint, for any state, any area, and you can get really detailed maps and downloads. I have seen mm -hmm. some youtubers um, talk about the on x maps that they're really good mm -hmm. so when you have a map on your phone he says i never i will never get lost well i could probably still manage to get lost even with a map on my phone but <laughs> i get what he's saying there mm -hmm. the more detailed map is, is is great so he says the main reason people find themselves in a quote survival situation is they forget where they are they don't know where they are. They get lost and something medical happens like a sprain or a cut or something that could be relatively minor anywhere else, a leg cramp. And you don't know where you are. So how do you get help? How do you get help to find you? Mm -hmm. So download the maps, know where you are 
And if you're using your phone and not an actual GPS, you make sure you have mm -hmm. uh, some way to charge it, an extra battery so you can keep that phone working. Well, and if you're using an actual GPS, have extra batteries. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just to have extra batteries, period, for whatever your navigation device is. But yeah. That's right. Um, you, I'm talking about navigation, uh, Cash Canada says, uh, caching today on an icy fire service road. We turned back once we lost cell service. Age brings on wisdom. <laughs> <Sometimes>. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good for um, them. Glad they're I am okay. talked about that snow cat. They were used to a rescue a family that got snuck in the snow, stuck in the snow. And Heather says, are you talking about the geocaching mom in Oregon who got stuck with her three kids? Hmm. Wow. Her car got stuck. Everything turned out okay because she was prepared and had downloaded a map for that area. Ah, well, how timely is that? Yeah, exactly. So well, that had turned out all right. That's good. Exactly. But, you know, it's one of those things you have to be ready and you have to be prepared. Yeah. Um, even if you're just going on a trip, right? There you know, just because, Hey, I'm going to go get this cash in this big box store mm -hmm. parking lot. And, uh, you know, oops, I slipped off the road and now I'm stuck in a ditch and I could be here for a while. You yeah. know, yeah. um, the next one. So D'Ambrosio, we're on point number three, know how to keep yourself warm. First line of defense can be your clothing. Anytime you're traveling, you're always going to carry extra warming layer, which can be shelter if needed. And in an emergency, it can be a fire too, right? If it starts to rain, you don't need a tarp, just get under a tree. Once all these things start adding up, that potential injury mixed with not having the right gear and having to spend the night, now we're putting ourselves in a survival situation. Right. But if we keep our body temperature up and we're comfortable, now we're in a much better situation. That makes total sense. Mm -hmm. Now, this next one you're going to talk about, Land Monkey, is something I had never considered. And yeah. and this is not a skill I have. Well, you know, when I when I saw this in the show notes earlier, I thought it was a threat. So um, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's interesting. It certainly isn't one that I would have thought of, although it is something I'm familiar with. And it's to know how to use, of all things, a tourniquet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like a, a, a turnkey solution here. Um, a tourniquet is how we pronounce it in the States. Yes, a tourniquet. Um, your medical kit that you carry, because you should be carrying the first aid kit, as we've discussed, um, can be whatever you want. But at the bare minimum, you need, at the absolute bare minimum, to have a tourniquet with you. If you're out hiking and you cut yourself the right way or, you know, really the wrong way, um, the difference between life and death is being able to stop the bleeding. It's a, a very quick thing. Um, and at that point, it doesn't matter if you have an in reach with you, no one's going to get to you in time. If you, if you've hit an artery, if you're bleeding out. So having a tourniquet on you and, and maybe even some, you know, some heavy gauze, uh, mm -hmm. I think it's referred to as combat gauze. Uh, it's not a bad little package to have with you. Um, I, I would suggest having a more fulsome uh, first aid kit and not just some gauze and a tourniquet. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, you do you. Um, but, you know, that said, again, um, this is, you know, what we were talking about before, the difference between uh, uh, survival and staying and and camping i guess mm -hmm. um but he, he goes on to say people buy tourniquets and then carry it with them and they're never and they've never put one on um they don't know what it's going to feel like so right. to, to crank it all the way down and pack it pack it in pack the wound uh and then slowly release the pressure to see if it's going to continue bleeding see if it's packed enough it is a very um I've had a tourniquet applied to me just in a practice situation. I, I have never had that serious of an injury knocking on all the wood mm -hmm. I can find around myself at the moment. <laughs> um, um, 
but it is it is not a normal or natural thing so it's um and you need to know the timing for it you you can't keep it on for more than an hour or you're gonna probably lose the limb mm -hmm. there's so many things to know about a tourniquet so yes it's a very important thing but it's also an important thing to know how to use properly i've never had one applied to me so i don't know it, but i can't imagine it feels anywhere near normal next time we get together wits end I'll yeah, yeah. <laughs> just uh apply it around the neck it I think that takes care of most things it's education yeah just just a little training it's fine nothing to see here move along <laughs> move along yeah well tourniquets are for what i consider pretty severe or major yeah. injuries but it's also super important just to learn how to trade basic minor injuries, yes. a sprain, how to wrap a sprain properly. That happens much more often than somebody, something that requires a tourniquet. Uh, the time you don't want to learn how to treat a sprain is when you're all alone and it's your ankle that's sprained. Mm -hmm. And you probably don't have cell coverage to watch YouTube on how to wrap a sprain. <laughs> probably not. Uh, he says, medically speaking, learn how to prevent and treat leg cramps. Mm -hmm. Wilderness Athlete, which apparently is a, a retailer, sells some amazing products. And he says, I love using them because every time I've used them, I don't get leg cramps. Oh, so good to know. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Sometimes having uh, electrolyte, an electrolyte solution can help you recover quickly on a leg cramp. Yeah. But, and uh, keeping yourself hydrated properly. Mm -hmm. Hey, 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 that's another point. We can't oh. talk about that one yet. All right. Um, but Wits End, you, you said, you know, you, if you don't have cell signal, you can't watch YouTube. Um, a year or two ago, I had an app on my phone that was uh, a first aid app, completely self-contained. Mm -hmm. You know, that's it had all the app. videos and, and tutorials in there that you didn't have to download. Um, so... They're out there if you want to. <laughs> the monkey has been replaced with a penguin. Land monkey, that's all we can see. Your face is gone and just your penguin hat. I, I, I'm hiding until I'm allowed to talk. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, I see. Sorry. Okay. Well, in that case, let's move on so we can get land monkey to talk again. Um, You're just getting on like a big house on fire. Well, <laughs> speaking of fire, <laughs> practice starting a fire. You know, carry a fire starting device with you, not just a lighter. A lighter or a ferro rod are great, but when you really need to start a fire, you're going to need to be able to do it in both wet and dry conditions. I thought all you had to do was throw a cigarette out of a moving car and the fire just started. Uh, yeah, um, like, the, yeah, well. People who are really good at it, yes. Yeah. When you're hiking, you don't have your moving car. Unless oh, you that's the car with you. Sure, okay, now I get I, it. And then you can take your car door with you. You can roll it, roll down the window and you get warm. Yeah. And then you throw out the cigarette. Okay. And it'll start a fire. Feels like problem solved to me. <laughs> so, um, you know, this summer when you're sitting in your backyard and you think, oh, some s'mores would be good. Start your own fire. I'm just going to light my backyard on fire. <laughs> well, I was thinking more like a, a a fire pit or, you know, a barbecue or something. Now, I think what's interesting here, and, and he says, carry a fire starting device. So, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, you know, a lighter, whatever. Flint and steel, yeah. And he says, with an accelerant. So is he, like, Im implying you should carry, like, fire starting materials of some sort? Like, right. Old Dryer lint and 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 wax, mm -hmm. egg carton something egg. like that. Dryer lint, you know, right? Fritos, uh, Fritos, <laughs> cotton balls and hand cleaner. You know, okay, those work well. So which, you know, there's might actually be in your first aid kit. That's right. right. So there there are things. You just you know, if you need to start a fire, like our friends who were hiking on the uh, twenty four mile trail and mm. had to spend an extra night. Boy, having a fire would be nice to keep warm and to let rescuers perhaps, you know, know where you are. So make sure you have those tools. And again, just don't go buy them in the store, toss them in your backpack and say, hey, I'm good. Practice with them. Yeah, for sure. 
Okay, Land Monkey. Yes. You can officially talk again. <laughs> Bye. I, as you could see, I didn't really wait. I waited yeah. for a little bit. Uh, I couldn't wait any longer. Um, hydration. We were talking about hydration. Good example, Chris. Hydrating while we're talking. Well done. Thank you. I'm very impressed. Um, keep yourself hydrated. And, and yes, yeah, Star Caster says, is that a banana in your pocket or just a leg cramp for better? Yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. Um, always have water with you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Great water. Um, you might really like to have, um, a, a Coke or a beer mm -hmm. on the trail, but don't use that as your primary hydration. Um, water, why not? Yeah. The water's the best. Hey, nothing wrong with, if you want to carry the extra weight, carry a beer mm -hmm. with you. And at you know, the, the summit of the hike or whatever you're, going to crack that celebratory beer as long as you've been hydrating along the way. But if that's the only thing you've brought to drink, you're going to have a problem. Why? It's um, liquid. You're, yeah. you have to be hydrating to some extent, right? You would think, you would think, but, um, a lot of those things are actually going to leach the minerals, uh, and the electrolytes from your body instead of supplementing or uh, giving you more. The best case scenario always is water. Um, you know, we talked earlier about having the, um, um, the, 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 uh, hydration, um, mm -hmm. the, the electrolyte packet electrolyte packets and, and whatever else. Mm -hmm. Great to also have that for sure. But as an absolute basic, always have water. And if you're going to do a multi-day hike, this is really good advice. Have the ability to get water and it says, or know where water is, I would say, and know where the mm. water is. Because <laughs> if you have the ability, if you have, if you have a water filter, but you have, there's nowhere yeah. to get any more water, then that's really not going to do you much good. It's just wait at that point. So know where you can mm -hmm. get water on a multi-day hike, do some planning ahead of time and have the ability to get that water in a drinkable format. So mm -hmm. a, a water purifier. And what's your favorite water purifier? Um, you know what? I can't remember the name. The, the life straw. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have a life straw that I carry for emergency purposes, mm -hmm. but I have a, a, a pump filter. Oh, okay. I have as well that I tend to just use on a more regular basis. And the life straw, absolutely. Just, there's always one in the pack just as a, a backup. Worst case scenario, got that. And you're right. Life straw is a fantastic product um, to have around. Um, uh, in addition to these safety basics, we've gone through these seven items. Um, D'Ambrosio has also mentioned ideas of things to carry such as bear spray. If you're going to be hiking in bear country, um, dependable pocket knife or fixed blade knife, headlamp. Um, and of course some sort of small pack to keep everything contained and close by. Um, and, and really, whether it's a, a, a multi-day trek or just a two-mile loop, um, it, it was going to pay to be prepared. I don't know how many times we've talked about that. And we've talked about situations where people went out on a short hike mm -hmm. and the trail got wiped out. Right. right. And they got stuck, right? I mean, that was in, in, that was in the Northwest a few years ago. We've had that. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, it can happen. So um, plan, prepare, bring the proper precautions. And you'll drastically reduce the likelihood of getting yourself into a survival situation. There you go. So, uh, you know, a bit of a downer, but let's take these, you know, at the beginning, but let's take these positive um, lessons here and be prepared, folks, please. I like y'all. And I want you all to come back even after, you know, even if you just do a two mile loop and you find out, Hey, you know what? Somebody threw a cigarette out of a car window and a fire started in the parking lot and I can't get back to my car. It wasn't me. Oh. The most important thing to know in that scenario is that it wasn't Jim. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, the craziest things can happen. Yeah. Please be safe. Okay. There. I said it. I want you all to have good luck of the Irish. Oh, wait, that's already over, isn't it? Yeah. And maybe you could carry on all year. And folks, thank you for taking the time to listen to this episode of Caching in the Northwest. We hope you enjoyed it. 
Absolutely. And we want to take a moment to thank Land Sharks and Gold Country Geotourism, our corporate Denali level sponsors. Land Sharks, L A N D S H A R K Z dot C A, is the outdoor adventure and geocaching store. Check them out online. Remember, they're shipping those online orders daily. And for absolutely amazing geocaching adventures, check out exploregoldcountry.com and don't forget to download the app. Folks, we want to thank our faithful Denali level supporters. That is, of course, Land Sharks and Gold Country Geotourism, Groovy Owl, Cool Cow Cachers, and Cashly the Geocaching app. If you want to know more about supporting this here show, well, click that Patreon link on the cachingnw.com <gasps> website. Like Kid Vegas 19 did. And J Carr. And Skyhawker. And Wino Seattle. LG9000. Gia Caches. Our, one of our new uh, patrons, Butterfly Girl. Allerobrick. Whidbey Island Gal. Mountain Bike. Trexer. <coughs> Excuse you. <laughs> Sorry, that one snuck up on me. Seabeck <laughs> uh, Tribe. Sneezebeck Tribe. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, another one of our new patrons, Geo Birder. Uh, let's see. How about green words? Oh, you guys have been busy while I've been away. You got new patrons and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, Team Noltex. And Teus. Ari54321. Nervous Energies. Core's got. Limax. Just Carlo. Subway Mark. Gas Station Tuna. Happy birthday to Kev MacD. Oh, it's his birthday. Happy birthday, Kevin. Happy, birthday, yeah, happy birthday. Very oh. recent. Close enough. Yeah. Cool. And Kitty Quest. Sega Hove. CRS 98. You, Dak. BC Rock Crawler. Oh, hey, and before I go on, uh, CRS 98, I'm pretty sure in my reviewing of one of the recent episodes while I was away, um, did make a comment about asking when I would be back. So thank you, CRS98. Uh, I appreciate being missed. See, somebody um, missed you. Somebody missed me. That's good. <laughs> uh, sorry, where are we? BC Rock Crawler? Yep. Camp Clan. You talks to rocks. GSM times two. Eckerdock. Logwork. Boomer365. Peach of Washington. MNerve. GeoNav Pro. MC three cats just finding our way. Another new one, railroad. Dora Moore, genies, wet coaster, flagman, and B Pendragon. Wow, that is a lot of new patrons. That's fantastic. Yeah, I'll try those in one breath. Yeah, yeah, I think we're well past that point now. It's like the old days, right? So, folks, thanks for taking the time to listen to this episode of Cashing in the Northwest. Know that your support helps keep the quality shows coming. If you like the show, please click on the Patreon link on the CashingNW.com website. And if you didn't like the show, you know what? Let us know what you want us to talk about. Give us some show ideas that you find interesting. If you like the vibe, though, please subscribe wherever you get your podcast and give us a review. Now, if you're in a restaurant, you would tip. If you're in a live audience, you would clap. But since you're on a podcast, leave us a free, fast, fabulous, fantastic five-star review. And of course, you can call 253-693-TFTC and ask us a comment. No, leave us a comment, ask us a question, or help us out with our first aid kit anytime of the day or night. And of course, you can email us at feedback at cashingnw.com. Join us every Thursday night. That's tonight, you know. This is when we're on the show yeah. Thursday night at 9 p.m. Pacific for a live show and chat. The show is produced by Chris Umfenauer, Jim Paulwitz, Jay Kennedy, and Brian Lang. Licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Copyright 2024 by Chris Umfenauer. And folks, I ask you to stay tuned for the after show. The after show. The after show. Uh, Kitty Quest was out with a friend yesterday when the car unexpectedly died but she has her priority straight we went and found a nearby cache before calling <laughs> East AA. oh funny funny um 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> hey, I was going to hey, clap, clap, clap. There you go. Clap, clap, clap. I like that. Um, Thanks, Skyhawker. I was going to say uh, for next week, um, you might want to, folks might want to tune in the show. We're going to see, I can't promise, we're going to see if we can get Mrs. Land Monkey to come on to the show um, and and we'll talk about our big trip we were just on. So hopefully that'll be fun. Nice. So let's all apply just a little gentle peer pressure. <laughs> wow. Yeah, because that always works with her. Yeah. Yeah, to Mrs. Land Monkey this week. And uh, is it time for Penguin Chat? <laughs> That's a new section of the podcast we're going to have where we talk just about penguins in the penguin language. <laughs> That's funny. Oddly enough, I had a penguin story this week. Well, what? This week or last. Yeah, well, it's not a story so much as uh, it reminded me I was... As one often, well, at least as I often do, went down a bunch of rabbit trails watching YouTube clips, and there was an interview with Benedict Cumberbatch Ooh, ah. on on a British uh, variety interview show. And a viewer or a listener in the audience, one of them said, "Ask him to say penguin," <laughs> and they, you know, well, apparently he uh, narrated. A show I don't remember where. Oh, he yeah, the Graham Norton show was where I saw him on there. Oh, I love the Graham Norton show. And uh, he mispronounced penguins. He said like pinwings or something. Oh, but no. he and he did it multiple times, enough that oh. now his he's embarrassed to uh, the story that he. Oh, the poor guy. <laughs> so, penguin. Yeah. So if you want to, yeah, it's out there. I'm sure you can, you can find it on the, on the on the tubes of you. Indeed. I ham wants to know who's gotten their Equinox souvenir. Oh, I don't know. I haven't checked. I guess I should say. I probably have not. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure I haven't. Let's see. I would look here. And, and I've now, I know I've talked about it, but I've forgotten the, uh, the time frame available for that. I do have it. My last souvenir was the gift souvenir in November. Ooh. Really? Yeah. Surprised. Before that was the uh, 20th anniversary and then the Wheel of Challenges, July 1st. I'm sorry, what? (laughs) Wheel of Challenges. There you go. Just five uh, souvenirs ago was the Tri-Cities Geocoin Challenge. Oh, wow. Starcaster says, I will once I log my finds for the week. Ah, there you go. There you go. Um, Wet Coaster says, remember that Adventure Labs can use periodic maintenance as well as your other hides. Especially if they're on a periodic table. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, and Brylang wants to know, please explain how to log ma- do a log maintenance for an adventure lab yeah. yeah funny guy um what i'm what i'm guessing oh. getting at is to look at the re- the reviews and the feedback that that come in for your adventure labs and see if you know something has changed um you know i i have an adventure lab where a plaque has gone missing and i need to go in right and update it so right that that's a good point you know or there's some construction you can't get to one of the locations or the locations have changed somewhat, rendering them even more interesting. Exactly. Um, Heather, Heather's on it tonight. Um, through the 23rd, find three caches for the Equinox. Oh, so that that's not happened. You know what? My, my dyslexia kicked in there and I thought, and I read that as Thursday, 23rd, find three. I was thinking, I did. No, more than just one day, and today isn't the 23rd, and I'm very confused by this. And then I realized, ah, I, I, I did the exact same thing. I, I, okay, Thursday the 23rd. Oh, today's the 21st. <laughs> that work. Oh, through. There we go. <laughs> so, um, at least they're not asking us to find four caches on a work day. Yeah, that helps. <laughs> So I got to go out and find three caches. Mm, maybe not three. 
Oh, wait. Do Adventure Lab stops count on this? Probably. Or do they not? I can't remember. I, I it, it tweaks in my head that maybe they don't. Oh, I, I'm getting the thumbs up from a certain lackey. That they do or do not? Well, how skookum is that? Totally skookum. Uh, I ham says I had one of my old caches go missing looking up a new ammo can right now mm. loading up a new ammo can right now. Oh, well, sorry to hear your cache went missing. Yeah. And, and it's hard and to find uh, the AL uh, stages do count for the souvenir. Okay. Uh, Skyhawker said had an AL stage pinball museum in Las Vegas that moved had to change the stage location. I think there's a lot of stages in Las Vegas. A couple. Mm -hmm. See how I did that? It's very clever. Okay, folks. Thank you so much. And until next week, go out and get your souvenir while you're caching in the Northwest.